morning. It is Monday, December 12th. I'm Marsha Boyles, and I'm delighted this morning to, she doesn't need any introduction, our Executive Director, Chandra Kumar. Chandra, we're glad to have you today and hope we get some calls. Thank you, happy to be here, Marsha. Let me remind folks that if you would like to make uh, a call, it is 366-3333. That's a pretty easy number to remember. 363-3333. So please do call. Chandra, this is a, a kind of an important day. Um, this afternoon we have uh, the exec team and the board of directors, I believe. Absolutely. So this afternoon in the theater, we will be presenting. Oh, is it in the theater, not it is in Hunter's theater. Crossing? Mm -hmm. We will be presenting uh, the 2017 business plan uh, along with the board of directors. So the board members will be here, some of them, um, and then uh, the administration, uh, including myself and our finance director, will be presenting uh, information to share with the community today. So. Mm -hmm. Looking Will there be an opportunity for folks to ask questions? Absolutely, there mm -hmm. always is. This is such a nice time for the residents to have uh, face time with the board. Yes. They get to see my face and my team's face on a regular basis. Right. So that's a great, great mm -hmm. chance to ask questions to the board and, you know, just, you know, whatever, whatever they'd like. We, I, I would encourage that we ask questions um, that the board can address. Operationally, there are going to be questions that we can always address on the side. So in the essence of time, we'll ask that they, people ask questions that All the right. board could answer. All right, that, 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 certainly, make, that ma certainly makes sense. Um, how many of the board members are going to be present? Uh, three of them will be here. Three. Mm -hmm. uh, one you know already lives here, Roy O'Connor, who is our resident yes. member. Mm -hmm. uh, Jackson Bain will be here, and so will Betty Price. Mm -hmm. So the three mm -hmm. of them will be here from the board. All right. Well, that's a wonderful opportunity to uh, to to see faces. Um, many of us have not met the board of directors, I, I suspect, and so that I think will be will be very valuable. And that's at one o'clock in the theater. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. All right. Terrific. Um, in the meantime, until we get some calls, um, what where are we with with uh, general services things? Where are we with hiring things? So with general services, we're still uh, in the midst of the window replacement project. Um, has that actually begun? It has. Mm -hmm. It has. Uh, I think we're in our probably in our two about two and a half weeks now. Oh, oh, it has. All right, has. and that's starting at par in Parkview. Um, Madison yeah, well, Green? so yes, it's, so it's a neighborhood one. Neighborhood and, one. Mm -hmm. And so we'll they'll continue to do that. Um, I think there is sometimes some uh, there is a misconception with some people that the. The doors, the sliding doors, are not going to be get to, uh, to get done. They are going to be done. They will also be done, but uh, it'll be after the windows are. So, it is still part of the project. It'll all get done. All right. It's just the windows will get done first. All right. So if you have a patio apartment, your windows will be replaced, but later your your doors will be replaced. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's okay. correct. Mm -hmm. And then we also have um, going on some you know repairs that affect more of the employees, but you, the residents might hear about parking on whose road. So this is temporarily. It, it's only till the, uh, the second week, first week actually, the end of the first week in January, and then the staff will be able to come back. We wanted to do the same kind of the uh, the staff parking the garage. Staff. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's the mm -hmm. exempt. We've asked the exempt employees and some of our mm -hmm. hourly employees that have volunteered to go over, and it's been actually an interesting um, ride because they get on the bus and everybody gets to see each other and say hello, and it's it's turned out to be a lot of fun. We were think singing uh, "Wheels on the Bus Go Round and Round" last Friday, so <laughs> it's just it's just a fun interaction. So we, you know, they've been very positive about it, and so you know. So that lasts till the middle of January. Well, just till the sixth of January. Sixth of January. Right. Okay, so that's it, fairly uh, short. Lived. Fairly short. Mm -hmm. But if you hear about it, that's why I just wanted to mention. Oh yes, it. we've already been hearing about. You it. have mm -hmm. been hearing. Okay, so that's good. Mm -hmm. So and then, mm -hmm. you know, we also have. Um, Lots of interviews that are happening for specific key roles within the community. One of them is our medical director. Uh, Dr. Morris has been uh, filling in as our interim medical director from Ashby, mm -hmm. and so we're uh, actively recruiting for that position. Um, also for our HR director um, to replace Tamika Mitchell. Yes. And um, so, you know, all of those are, are happening right now the search, the interviews. Uh, Chandra, what about uh, resident life director? 
that is another that is another key role mm -hmm. right now Brian Marandola who is our associate executive director has been filling in along with the help of Kimberly Nelson who is our philanthropy director mm -hmm. she has been managing the social aspects of resident life and Brian has been helping um, and to manage alongside our operations managers uh, Shirley and Leanne. Shirley is in our home support and Leanne is in mm -hmm. certified mm -hmm. home health and our hospice uh, is actually being um, run and, uh, along in, uh, under that same uh, umbrella but uh, we have a person from our corporate office who's been here helping mm -hmm. with the hospice um, team. But the resident life director position is being recruited for? Absolutely, mm -hmm. yes. It is, mm -hmm. a, it is a unique um, role because it has yes, such it a is. wide variety yes. of mm -hmm. uh, business lines that report up to it. Yes, both the health and the social yes. aspects. Yes, yes that, that's, and of course for residents that's a very critical it is. Uh, it is. person. Mm -hmm. it is. So we want to make sure mm -hmm. we have the right fit and the right structure. Mm -hmm. It would take it would take a, a unique set of, of credentials, I think, to be able to do that job. That, that's a tough one. Absolutely, mm -hmm. somebody that has an understanding of, you know, the people side of it, but also has right. the business acumen mm -hmm. and the health. One would hope maybe the the uh, health aspects right. too. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. So okay. Uh, do you have uh, particular um, goals in mind in terms of, of dates for hire, or do you? I mean, I, I guess you just really it depends on who you're getting who you're getting in the interview. Well, I, I think um, for us the goal is as soon as possible, but we don't want to. We want to make sure the fit is right, would, yes. that they're the right candidate. More um, important than timing. Yes, mm -hmm. and that they that they have the focus is that you know this is our residents' home, so we want to make sure. Right that we have the right person that understands, you know, the Erickson way of our values here at Greenspring, but also, you know, is able to uh, gel well with, you know, having the, the council and having the board and having, you know, the executive team. And, and sometimes, you know, when you, when you interview people from other types of businesses, they ha don't have that same experience. So we want to make sure we have someone that understands and appreciates our structure. Yeah, certainly that can relate to the residents. Um, yeah, it's a it's a very critical role. I think Absolutely. I think all of us, um, you know, all of us feel very strongly about the person in that role. Um, and and we were sorry to see Pam leave. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. I mean, yeah, that was it was a great opportunity for her. And so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we all ha we all have to wish wish people well and move forward. And absolutely. I'm, and I'm mm -hmm. I'm very confident we'll find the right person for that position. Um, we've been very, very fortunate in the positions that we have filled so far, uh, including in Garden Ridge. Mm -hmm. We had a multiple positions that we filled, and and I are I those to, all filled at this they point? They are mm -hmm. actually. Oh, I, I'm terrific! Absolutely, that that makes Check. life simpler. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. So y you can already mm -hmm. feel the difference. I'm hearing from residents and families uh, you know, at Garden Ridge. At Garden mm -hmm. Ridge, and and that really it shows that the team is starting to gel. You know they're new, but they've got new, you know, a new set of eyes and ears, and and so um, you know it's it, it's really good good energy there right now. I see we have a call. Okay. Uh, all right, caller. Do we have a Hello? call? Hello. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Caller. I can't hear anything. Speak to us, caller. You're on the I'll air. Hang up and call back. Well, that didn't that didn't work terribly well. Um, I don't know. The control room has has is in charge of the calls, so I'm not sure how that worked. I guess we'll wait for her to call back. Absolutely. Um, I I hear the I hear the phone ringing. I think we'll get this in a moment. Um, apparently, that was a false alarm. We we don't have a call. Um, so Chandra Garden Ridge then is uh, it, it is is filled in terms of oh not we do we, have a I'm call. Not hearing anything. All right, uh, caller, can you hear us? We seem to be having we seem to be having technical problems this morning. 
Um, caller, can you hear? Now she's gone. Gracious. Easy come, easy go, as they say. So Garden Ridge, um, have all those positions been filled? I know there were a number of, of supervisory positions, weren't there, including the, the uh, director? Yes, so all mm -hmm. of the positions have been filled. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we've got a few here and there, but most of the, mm -hmm. um, the, the higher level administrative positions have been filled. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be positions in the sense of part-time staff or PRN staff mm -hmm. positions sure. That, sure. that'll be open. Mm -hmm. But at this point, we're happy to say that the positions are filled. Oh, I can, I can imagine you're happy to say I'm that. I'm very happy. Um, <laughs> makes your life a lot simpler, doesn't it? It does. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, and I, I work very much by the motto, I surround myself by, with people that are smarter than me, and I, I really have a good team, so I'm, I'm very, very happy. Oh, that, that's, that is excellent. Are, in a way, are Garden Ridge folks easier to find than people to... Um, to fill uh, Green Spring positions. I'm, I'm just thinking the fact that there are so many healthcare facilities um, and so few CCRCs in terms of training people and I just would think that there might be a greater abundance of people for Garden Ridge to fill Garden Ridge positions than to fill Green Spring positions. And I could be wrong about that. Well, they're actually um, both pretty competitive uh, because uh, the Garden Ridge mm -hmm. staff is not just you're looking for management skill sets, but in many cases you're looking for clinical skill sets yes, also. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. And I think the challenge for a community that is the size of Green Spring is for example, a resident life director or a resident services director in a CCRC that has, the average is about three to 500 people, is a significantly uh, different role than, than a community that has about 2,000 residents. Yes. So it doesn't always equate apples to apples. So it's making sure that we find somebody that is able mm -hmm. to manage that scope of responsibility, not just the specifics of the job, but having a community of this size is, is it's, it's different. Yes, you know, having worked on both of ends of the spectrum. Well, is different. yes, because you you did work in smaller communities, yes, did you not, Kendra? I did. I, mm -hmm. did. I worked in, um, most of my career were, was in your average size retirement community. Four hundred kind yes. of thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it is it is a different style of management, and you know you have to be able to to resonate your your management skill sets, your leadership skill sets. But you know, in, in a different way because of the size and the ability to get to all places. So, yeah, so it is certainly unique. the complexity of the services would would be somewhat different, or at least I yes. would assume that. Um, yeah. So that that is that is mm -hmm. the the big challenge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, the fact that that we don't have a long history of CCRCs, there aren't going to be just you know hordes of people. Um, available with that kind of experience. Um, well, it's interesting because we, it's, we do get we do get applications. It's it's we get quite from a few other CCRCs. We do, mm -hmm. but it's finding the right person, mm -hmm. and you know, and, mm -hmm. and I think that we are are you know are selective because we want to make sure that we have the best of the best. Um, so we, that we, we like to hear that. So mm -hmm. it, it does take a little bit. I mm -hmm. mean. There, we, we are getting lots of people that are applying, but we want to make sure we have the right Is fit. that right? Yes. Okay, well, that's yes. interesting. Um, mm -hmm. All right. Is, is this a field, uh, are, are the, uh, the top level CCRC people, is this a field where there is a lot of transition frequently? Uh, it depends on the provider. I, you know, I have to mm -hmm. say, you know, within Erickson, we don't, we don't typically have a lot of transition. Mm -hmm. It, it really depends on each company is a little bit different. There are companies where there's lots of transition mm -hmm. starting at every level. Um, so it, it, it really is specific to the enterprise that, and what their mm -hmm. values are, how they treat their employees. And yes. that doesn't matter if, if you're you know, working in the, in, the, in the kitchen or dining services or you're the executive director. I think it makes a big difference you know, on, on how you feel about where you work how the residents feel about you, how you feel about them. And we're fortunate that, you know, the residents here are so supportive of us, um, you know, and, and that's, that's a lot of the reason that people come to this, to come to this environment to work, is that you've got to enjoy that people interaction, so. And of course, that's really critical to residents too, the, the relationships we build up with the staff. Um, 
Absolutely. Is, is, Absolutely. is so important. You know, we've seen so much transition here in terms of personnel. Um, I think it has been a little unsettling Absolutely. Um, it has. for folks. Yes. Uh, thank you for acknowledging that. It just, uh, because there have been so many areas of transition, um, not, not just the executive director, although that it, uh, four and four years is, is a lot. Um, and you're saying that that's fairly unusual for the Erickson communities um, in terms of, of transitions. Well, you look at the longevity of, of some of the staff that are here, and that's not typical to see that change. And each of those changes, even here in the executive director role, have been for different reasons. Yes. You know, um, it's been, you know, a lot of it has just been because they have the opportunity to go to another Erickson community, so they're not really leaving Erickson. You know, and, and so they may have transitioned from Greenspring, but right. they're they're going someplace else. And I, I'll tell you, at, for example, at Riderwood, uh, more than 60% of the executive team, we all received promotions. So, I, for example, I came here. You know, HR our HR director from there became our regional HR director. So, their transitions happen, but when it's within right. the same company, that's for a good reason. Right. Oh yes, no, <clears throat> that that that's a little that's a little different situation, um, and I think some of it was coincidental that that you know uh, the number of people left. But yes, <clears throat> that certainly is that certainly is true. We'll hope that we begin to settle down and and have. I I am uh, right there with you. I was going to say, I'm sure from your standpoint, you would you would hope so too. Um, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, yes. Chandra, what else um, is on your uh, is on your agenda this morning? Well, we've got a, a, a pretty busy week this week because we've got town hall meetings. Um, you know, as we do said with, with our residents, but we have it with the staff, which goes from seven o'clock in the morning and finishes at two o'clock in the, the next morning. Now, which day? Which days it's are the, those? That's on Wednesday. That's on Wednesday. Wednesday. So mm -hmm. it's going to be an, a, a pretty busy busy week. We also have the staff appreciation reception that's going to be um, this week for uh, both independent living, this time it's going to be an independent living, and in Garden Ridge on another day. Mm -hmm. um, and in Garden Ridge we're having a winter uh, winter fest um, that's going to be celebrated on the 16th. Now what is what is the winter fest? Um, it's actually a, a, a celebration with the residents and, 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 and the staff and you know, families come, and it's just a nice evening event for mm -hmm. our residents social. in Garden. Yes, mm -hmm. it's a social mm -hmm. event. Um, additionally, this weekend, our staff were having our holiday party, so um, it'll be nice to have, ha you know, get to see everybody in their, you know, in their um, finery that you usually, a lot of times we see staff in, in uniforms, and then you get to see them all dressed up. Uh, all dressed great. up, it's yes, great, now that great, would be a yeah. treat. That would be a treat. Um, you want to take a look? I, I think these are the questions that have been asked, uh, Chandra, by phone, and apparently we're still having some technical problems. So the question says, does Chandra read Grix? I do not have access to that, so. Do not have access to Grix. I do Grix. not have access to mm -hmm. that. I, that is a resident forum, mm -hmm. so. Unless somebody shares that with me specifically, I I, I do not have access mm -hmm, to that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I think the I think it it, it is primarily a resident right. <coughs> communication uh, format. So I I would be surprised if you did have access to it. So if, if mm -hmm. somebody wants to share with me, I'd, I'd right. absolutely be happy right. to read that. All right, that's the um, answer to that. <laughs> does a dietitian review the menus? So we do have uh, dietitians that review the menus. Um, but in general, when you're talking about dietitians being more involved, that is in Garden Ridge. That is a requirement to have dietitian involvement in those levels of care. That's part of the accreditation requirement? <clears throat> well, it's part of the regulations. Part of the regulations. Yes. All right. So yes, you, there, there, there's at least one full-time dietitian, isn't there, on the staff at, at Garden Ridge? Two. We two. Have two full-time mm -hmm. dietitians, mm -hmm. yes. But do, do dietitians... Um, have any review of independent living menus? They, they, the, the menus um, are, are, there is incorporation with their feedback, but there isn't the same level that if you're expecting a dietitian to look at every menu. I mean, each, each one of those items has a, a set, uh, you know, caloric value. It has, 
you know, ingredients to it. So, you know, it's 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 a pretty set recipe across our business lines. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that that comes it comes pretty much set. We they make some right. changes All if right. they needed to. Um, I see, Chandra. We we may have a live call okay. here. Um, do we have a call? Okay, go ahead. Hello, Hi, Chandra. Ca caller. You're on the air. Uh, yes, Chandra. Yes. <clears throat> I know. I know you are aware of this problem, but I'd like to ask you about it again. We have a gentleman, a resident of Madison Green, who parks in the Oak Hill Handicap Place. He's there. Uh, he's been there for 17 days now. Uh, it looks like he winterized his vehicle the other day. He was draining water out of it the camper, and uh, he's in the handicap spot. We have a lot of handicap residents in Oak Hill who are coming and going in the cold weather. Uh, they have family members who have to escort them up to their apartments. The family members have to double park out in the parking lot, which uh, inhibits the buses or if we have an emergency vehicle, vehicle that has to come through. Uh, I think, I know that there are regulations that allow people with handicap tags to park there, but I think 17 days of free parking is absolutely too much. And I believe it, he ought to be able to move his vehicle somewhere else and get it out of our handicap spot. We only have two, and he's been there for 17 days. Do you have any kind of an answer to that? Um, actually, I, I am I am aware of the situation currently, and I you were absolutely correct about the handicap parking oh. space. That if you do have a handicap parking permit. We are not able to force anyone to move. We have really relied on the community, um, you know, that sense of community to be, you know, uh, you know, aware of how does it affect each other and really that community spirit of not utilizing those spaces for, you know, uh, unless it's needed for that specific amount of time. In reference to the, it, I assume it's a camper you said, correct? Or a... Yes, she said camper, camper yes. correct. Mm -hmm. So th that is something that we are reviewing is, um, you know, what, where is the best place to kind of a park, uh, uh, you know, a, a, um, a vehicle of that size. Right. Right. So um, this is under consideration right now. We are reviewing it. Does, does security have the ability to at least speak to the person and ask that, the, that they be, that they remove their vehicle from a handicapped place? Uh, not if it has a handicap parking. I see. All right. Permit. So there really is no enforcement um, um, power here. Well, there, well, as I said, we are reviewing it, so I will follow up as needed. I just at this point couldn't give you the exact answer to okay. it. Okay. All but right. We are. It is under review right now. All right. Thank you. I see. Now we have another call. Um, caller, are you there? Caller, are you Go there? Ahead. Hi. Um, you were talking about nutrition, and now tonight's menu at the Jefferson has five different starches. And I can't believe that a dietitian would approve this. And we haven't had prime rib in ages. I mean, things are being cut back, and we're paying more, and we're getting less. And uh, we can't get fruit in place of dessert when we have carryout. Anyway, would, uh, please look into it. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Thank you for that. Chandra, was there uh, an additional question on that sheet that I gave you? Uh, it had a, to do with uh, tomato-based and bread items, uh, which are hard to digest. There's too many of them. I see. OK. Um, so I will, I will take these comments forward to our dining services director. Um, you know, generally, if you look at the menu, there are quite a few items. It's a matter of making the right choices. Um, but, you know, some, some things may be hard for some people to digest, and for other people, they've requested it. So we sort of need to really balance, yes. you know, and have more choices are, is our biggest thing. I was going to say, it's to have what, what you're really saying is that there have to be enough choices so that right. everybody's, everybody's tastes and, and uh, tolerances can be accommodated for. Mm -hmm. But there, there's always opportunity mm -hmm. for us to look at it and say, okay, if it's a day of five tomato items or five tomato-based items, that right. doesn't make sense. Right. So there, there is, there is 
still always opportunity to review and look at, and, but you know, look at kind of what's on the menu, but all, you know, and, and understanding that sometimes when you're doing so many menus and so many rotations, I don't know about you, but sometimes I have a day in the week where I'm like, I don't know what to make. And that's just for four people, you know, seven days out of the week. So I, it, it can be challenging if, if to If you be only creative. have one day like that, I think you're in good shape. <laughs> it's, it, it is challenging right. and the team really tries, so we don't always get it right. Right. Get it right, but right. Uh, we will look at it absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay, well I see we're down to the last couple of minutes here. Um, is there anything, anything else you would like like to talk to us about in, the, in our last two minutes? Well, just, um, you know, we've been lucky that we have not had any, um, you know, inclement weather, but right. we could have that, you know, coming up soon. I know the team has been prepping and making sure that all of the- Have the salt- Salt in the, and the uh -huh. snow blowers mm -hmm. and the staff are ready mm -hmm. for that. But we also mm -hmm. ask, um, you know, that you, you if, you're, if you're driving, you make sure that, you know, that you've got your you know, your, your windshield wiper fluids are filled, that, you know, that you're taking precautions also as you venture out. And if it's a, if it's a icy day or it's, uh, it looks like there's a patch of ice, please do not try and walk on it. Um, you know, because we, there are places in the community where we may not know right away that there's an icy patch. But if you could continue to, to let us know at the front desk. You know, last year we were all incredibly impressed. We had a couple of, you know, huge snowstorms. Mm -hmm. And honestly, within, you know, by 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning, the roads were cleared, the sidewalks were cleared. I mean, it was really quite impressive. Fairfax County was practically paralyzed. Mm -hmm. um, but, but Green Spring just absolutely seemed to sail through these incredible snows. So they, they at least last year, they, had, they, they clearly had it down pat because it was very well done. Yes, Lynn's team, um, you know, that whole general services team really yes. works hard. And, yes. and you can imagine being out in that weather with that snow blowing and not being able to see your hand. Exactly. Um, you know, it, it, it is a tremendous effort. Um, but just also want to make sure that each, each, of, each of our residents are aware to, to make sure that they take their precautions to yes. when venturing out. Yes, that's certainly. And sometimes when you have pets and you want to take them out, you just want to make sure you're, you're careful because nowadays even the, the, the grass gets cold, you know, icy and solid, so we, we don't want anybody to hurt themselves. So. No, and, and, and we had so much snow last year, even the pets didn't want to go out. Oh, was, I, I don't blame them. Uh, no, no, I, I didn't blame them either. Uh, Chandra, anything else um, that you would like to say? I, th I think, uh, you know, again, encouraging folks to come this afternoon. Yes, um, absolutely. That would be great to see, you know, as many a good faces. Crowd. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I, I you know, also this is a time to, you know, to celebrate all of the good things that are happening. I mean, this is this is our, you know, we've got the holidays coming up. Staff is very, very happy. I know the residents have raised, mm -hmm. you know, a, a, a good sum of money in, in appreciation. Yes. And those checks have been going out since Friday, so they have, the staff is really appreciating that, you know, that the residents think so much and they share, you know, and, and, and are able to, you know, to give them this, this appreciation at this time of the year. Um, you know, I know on behalf of the executive team and the staff, wishing all of you a very, very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I won't be probably back on in this forum till next year. That's right, until the so new year. Mm -hmm. This will be my last mm -hmm. show on this, uh, this show for this year. With, mm -hmm. But I will see everyone uh, later on uh, later on today. So you'll get to see me all day today on TV. Golly, golly <laughs> you're earning your pay today, for I, sure. Yes, you'll probably get tired <laughs> of seeing me today. Uh, well, we're delighted you came on. Thank and you. And we'll look forward to this afternoon with you and, and your team and the uh, Board of Directors. Absolutely.